Hey guys, we're going to talk about converting metric measurements this time. What we're going to do is actually roll through how to use the road to help us um, convert metric measurements. So that's measurements that are in meters, liters, or grams. So I want you to pay attention. Uh, you can use this video as a review for any of the assessments that we have coming up, but you can also refer to it anytime you need to remember the steps to use the road to convert measurement. So first of all, what are metric measurements? Like I just said, they're the ones that have to do with meters, liters, and grams. And we're going to refer to those as the unit. So the unit is specifically whether or not we're measuring length, which is meters, or any of the other metric meter measurements. If we're measuring capacity or volume, which is liter, or for measuring mass, which is similar to weight, but there are a few differences, and that's going to be measured in grams. Now remember that that's just the base unit and what metrics does is that it uses other words to help describe um, the size of that metric unit. So we've got milli, centi, deci, the unit, which is meter, liter, or gram, deca, hecto, and kilo. And I want you to know right now that we're going to be dealing with milli, centi, and kilo. At this point, we don't really use deci, deca, and hecto. But you do need to know that sometimes it'll just be the plain unit. So it just might be meter, might be liter, might be gram, or it might be milliliter, milligram, millimeter, kiloliter, kilogram, kilometer. Um, we don't typically talk about centiliters or centigrams, though you might see those so you need to be aware that um, they are units of metric measurement. All right, so let's talk about the road. <clears throat> and here's what we want you to do. Every time you have to convert metric measurements, we want to see you write the road at the top of the paper. Every single time you have a paper with a problem that involves converting metrics, we want to see you write the road. So the road is the saying that you're going to use. You're going to say to yourself, kids hate doing something, either math, language, or grammar, during cold months. And so what we would expect to see at the top of your paper is, Kids hate doing something during cold months. They may hate doing math, they may hate doing language, they may hate doing gra grammar, and those stand for meters, liters, and grams. So the, the unit in the middle is where you would put the meter, the liter, or the gram. That's the thing that they hate doing. Kids hate doing something during cold months. We want to see this written at the top of your paper every time we convert measurements. So you need to get it stuck in your head. Kids hate doing something during cold months. And each of those words is an acronym for one of the metric measurements. Kilo, hecto, deca, deci, centi, or milli. All right, so I'm gonna tell you the steps really quickly here, and then we're actually gonna do some examples with it. So the first step I've already gone over with you is you're gonna draw that road at the top of your paper. You're gonna write, kids hate doing something during cold months, right at the top of your paper. And then you're gonna ask yourselves these questions. Where does the measurement live? Where does it want to move? You're going to draw it moving, you're gonna ask yourself which way, how many times, and what's really moving, and just so you know, the thing that's really moving is always going to be that decimal. And you're never gonna leave it a hot mess because we know we don't leave our work a hot mess. So it's hard to say those and get you to remember them without actually trying them. So let's try a couple problems. All right, so step one is to draw the road. Kids hate doing something during cold months. All right, the next thing you're gonna ask yourself is what unit are we dealing in? So we're de dealing in liters, so we're gonna put an L in the something. So kids hate doing language during cold months is what our, our saying would be. And the next question we asked, have to ask ourselves is where does it live? So that first number is where it currently lives. Our number lives in the milliliter house. We know milli is the smallest, so it currently lives right here in the milliliter house. The next question we ask ourselves is where does it want to move? Where does it want to go? Well, it wants to go to the leader house, which is right here. Now I need to draw it. So I'm actually going to put my little pencil right here in the Millie house and I'm going to draw it. One, two, three hops to get to the leader house. It moved in this direction. And when something is moving to the left, we know that the number is actually getting smaller. 
because we're actually dividing by 10. And so I need to take a look and see. I moved to the left. I moved three times. And the thing is, do you remember what I said really moved? The thing that really moved is the decimal. In a whole number like this number 9,000, where is the decimal? It's right here at the end. How many spaces am I going to move? That's right, I'm going to move three spaces. One, two, three. And I'm gonna draw my decimal again because that's the thing that really moved. We know that my number is getting smaller and then I never leave it a hot mess. So my answer is going to be nine decimal zero 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 or we know that it's also just the number nine. 9,000 milliliters is equivalent or equal to nine liters. All right, let's try this one. This one time we're going to be converting meters. So we know that we're talking about length. The very first step is to write the road at the top of the paper. Kids hate doing something during cold months. In this case, we're going to be talking about meters. So they hate doing math during cold months. And I'm going to ask myself, where does our number live? It lives in the meters. And where does it want to move? It wants to move to the centimeters. Is my phone going off? All right, the next thing I do is I'm actually going to draw the move. So I'm going to take my decimal point, which is currently where it lives in the meters, and I'm going to move it to where it wants to go. One, two. It took me two hops to move, and I'm moving towards the right, so my number is actually getting larger because I am multiplying by 10. So we know that the thing really moving is the decimal point. So if I take a look at this number 63, the decimal point is always at the end of a whole number, and it's going to move how many times? Two, one, two, and I'm going to move my decimal point. And what do I do with empty spaces? I fill it in with a zero. And I never leave my answer a hot mess. My answer is actually going to be 6,300. So the equivalent of 63 meters is actually 6,300. All right, let's try another one. This time we're gonna be talking about grams. Grams are a way to measure uh, mass. Step one is to write the road at the top. Kids hate doing something during cold months. The something is going to be grammar because we're talking about grams, that's my unit. Next question is where does it live? Well, it currently lives in the kilogram house and it wants to move to the gram house. So my next step is to move it. I'm going to move my decimal point from the kilograms house. One, two, three spaces. One, two, three. And I know I'm moving to the right. I am multiplying. My number is going to get larger. My next step is to actually move the decimal. Remember, the decimal is the thing actually moving. <clears throat> I have a decimal point at the end of my whole number, and I need to move three spots. One, two, three. What do I do with empty spaces? Fill them in with zeros, and I never leave my answer a hot mess. My answer is actually 12,000. 12 kilograms is equivalent or the same as 12,000 grams. One thing that you need to make sure you remember is that when that decimal is moving, we're actually doing math. We're multiplying by 10. So for instance, take a look. If I multiply 12 times 10 for the first top, so that first jump, I get 120. Then I multiply it by 10 again for the second hop, and I'm going to get 1,200. I multiply it by 10 the third hop, and I'm going to get 12,000. It's the same answer. I just want you to understand that when you're moving to the right, you're multiplying by 10, and if you're moving to the left, your number is getting smaller, so you're actually dividing by 10 each of those times. So it's not just that we're moving the decimal. The math behind it is that you're either multiplying or dividing by 10. All right, let's do one more example here. I've got 54 millimeters, and I'm converting it to centimeters. So the unit that I'm dealing with is meters, so I'm measuring length. Step one is to write the road at the top of the paper. Kids hate doing something during cold months. In this case, the something is math because we're talking about meters. The first question is where does it live? Well, it currently lives in the millimeter house. Where does it want to move? It wants to move to the centimeter house. Then I'm going to move it. Start in the millimeter house where it lives. 
and I move to the centimeter house. That's just one jump. Then I need to actually move the thing that's moving. The thing that's actually moving is the decimal point. And a whole number, the decimal point is at the end. I moved to the left, so I'm actually dividing by 10. And I'm going to move my decimal point one place to the left. I never ever leave my answer a hot mess. My answer is actually 5 and 4 tenths. I just moved the decimal point one place to the left because I just divided by 10. 54 millimeters is equivalent or equal to 5 and 4 tenths of a centimeter.